got two new MagSwitch products to show you today. These have been in the works for a long time, so it's exciting to finally tell you about them. Those familiar with my channel and what I've been doing at MagSwitch will remember that for a while we offered a kit to make a magnetic base for a power feeder. James King did an exotic wood base and Paul Jackman made one from pallet wood, both very on brand, to help us launch. Uh, you can see those videos, I put them in the description. This kit was really about gauging the interest level. Is this something that people wanted? And as there was quite a bit, we decided to develop something that didn't require any building by the customer. It just bolts right to the power feeder base. Now, luckily, there's almost an unprecedented amount of industry standardization in the whole pattern on the bases. Small power feeders, doesn't matter the brand. I have not found a single one that isn't two and a half inch by two and a half inch. So if you buy two magnets, that's strong enough for small power feeders up to half inch. And they all have this mounting pattern, two and a half inch by two and a half inch. And if you have a larger power feeder with a one horsepower motor, this is what you'll want. That central base has a three and a half by four and a quarter hole pattern, which is again the standard across all large power feeders. And purchasing two sets of four total magnets gives enough magnetic clamping force to mount even these massive industrial feeders. So here I am getting some help from my son ripping boards for twin turbo vice jaws. Power feeder definitely speeds up the operation. My intention is to keep finding production efforts that I can tackle in my shop. I think that's really fun. It keeps me thinking about what tools are important and I'm in that game of trying to really make things at a reasonable scale in the shop. Uh, so I'm going to keep doing it and bolting a power feeder to my saw is not a viable option for me. So this quick setup, this product affords is really exciting for me and hopefully for a lot of others out there as well. One last thing to note compared to the kit. The kit had five of these 30 millimeter magnets. We wanted to beef that up just a bit, so we went with six. The housing is also larger, which conducts more magnetic flux, so it's substantially stronger than the kit was. Next up, followers of my channel will remember that I built a drill press vise back in early 2020 and used mag jigs to secure it to the table. Promptly after this build, the behind-the-scenes work started at MagSwitch to make a mount capable of attaching to and securely mounting all drill press vices on the market. This is what we came up with. The three tracks on top allow the bolts to drop in and position for any vice mounting pattern, which happens to be the exact opposite of the standardization I just mentioned for power feeders. In this case, it seems like no two are alike. The other big challenge we had with this one was keeping the footprint small. A small base has great compatibility with smaller drill presses that don't have big tables, but it means that the magnets have less holding torque. So some upgraded magnets and proprietary mag switch magic was needed to get the mount strong enough to do the job. It'll be good to be able to show this one in videos from now on. I was actually using it to drill the steel plates for the mobile base that I built a few videos back. So if you think either of these belong in your shop, there's a link down below where you can check those out and use code Andrew Klein to get your 10% off. I've got just a couple more tips and backstory to cover before wrapping this one up. First off, there are some other content creators making videos for these products, and I'm going to list their videos in the description. And secondly, if you're new to power feeders like myself, a couple tips for you. I found that it's a bit fiddly of an operation to try to get the wheels exactly level with the workpiece. It doesn't have anything to do with how you mount it, but I found it a little bit time consuming, but also surprisingly important. So my recommendation is that you take the time to get it right. Also, I'd recommend only a very slight angling of the front wheels towards the fence. That's worked best for me. And lastly, because there's a lot more downward pressure when you're using a power feeder than what you're used to, any little obstruction, for example, like your saw insert being just a little bit above the tabletop, can cause a workpiece to jam. And this was tripping me up for a while. Now, admittedly, I'm still a power feeder beginner, so if there are people with more experience that have other tips or insights, those would certainly be appreciated in the comments. And I'll wrap this video up with a shout out to Mike Musio. I mentioned earlier that by mid-2020, I was in full swing developing the drill press vice base with MagSwitch. And at the beginning of 2021, MagSwitch affiliate Mike Musio approached us with an idea for a vice mounted by switchable magnets. Being an independent inventor, that's how I got started in all this. I really feel for someone coming up with the right idea and putting work into it and just being a little bit too late for royalties and other accolades. 
But if you use Mike's affiliate code at checkout, then he'll get a nice affiliate commission and you should also check out his YouTube channel. He does really great work. One of his videos is popping up at the top right. Thanks for watching.